Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. LCK Summer 2019. We are right at the end of the first round robin. Only six teams remain to close out what has been a pretty exciting first round robin of our summer so far. I'm Atlas, of course, this is Fox Smithy. And uh, we're very excited to get into it after a Rift Rivals that we were finally successful in. I haven't reveled in the glory just yet. You and Valdez had an opportunity to do that yesterday. And uh, just just feeling good, Papa Smith. We're living in a post-Rift Rivals mm -hmm. world, which for once, it's is a good thing. time to be excited, Atlas. So uh. now, we get an even hyper match than perhaps some of the games at Rift Rivals, because Sandbox Gaming, the best dressed team not to be at Rift Rivals, both based on spring season when they lost the wild card match, which qualified down one, so we can't complain with the result. They also, seven and one before the Rift Rivals break, they're looking to go equal first. They could be eight and one, be the first team to close the round robin at eight and one. Griffin have a chance to catch up. However, down one gaming, if you count the best of ones at Rift Rivals as series, are on a nine match win streak. If it's just the LCK, they're on a six best of three win streak. This is actually a battle of the Titans, even though these are the new promoted teams most recently. Yes, it's absolutely gigantic. Of course, Griffin's still number one spot at the moment in the LCK standings. They're yet to play one match. They're against Gen G. It'll be the first game tomorrow, which will be the final game of that first round robin that we were talking about. And uh, exciting to see whether Griffin will be able to go one loss, but that one loss is against Sandbox. And if they win here, then they will be able to guarantee that it's only that one loss of a match in their first round, Robin. Having a look at things, SKT still on their streak. We'll uh, check in on them tomorrow with the Telecom War coming in as our first match of round two. But let's just focus on this. Sandbox, down one. Again, the last two teams promoted because we had no one last season with the end of last year. We got these two teams and done one. They've really risen, right? They came and was their final form? Probably not. Wasn't an impressive form, definitely. Yeah, right. At Rift Rivals, the style with which they took down JD Gaming. I said they were the best team to debut an international event for Korea since 2013 SKT, the first time SKT won international. Sandbox, they haven't had that chance yet, but they've been so impressive domestically. And with Coach Comet coming back from Sunin Gaming and helping out with Pink Ban in summer, they've actually got even better. And they were pretty damn good in spring. Yeah, and Kim Jong Su, of course, on the side of Dom One. Both uh, coaches forged in the flames of the LPL. Kim Jong Su with a few extra accolades to his name, of course. We're going to have a look at the points of the match here. Promotion, friend and rival, are about to figure out in the final match of round one. Of course, promoting in the beginning of this year both of these teams. Fun story. Both of them on six match wins. Yeah. If you just talk about LCK, someone's got to lose, which in this case is a hype thing rather than the depression that can settle in at the bottom of the table. Sandbox were eliminated 2-1. Kind of a surprise to one if you think back to spring season because sandbox were like perennially first second then they were outright third for a long time slipped they definitely couldn't close summer so spring like they started it they were close to making it to riff rivals you count in those best of ones done one of one three in a row and nine all together depth this is so hype it really is a is. matchup even though it looked like an eminently skippable game at the start of the year. Yeah, you'd look at this and you'd say, oh, the two promoted teams, this will probably be a wash. Like, let's wait until uh, game two when we've got big names like Jinne, but not happening <laughs> this time around. Sandbox versus Dom One is a huge matchup between these two. Excited to see whether Sandbox can actually get the revenge, because you could imagine it still hurts if they were knocked out of that availability of international stardom as uh, they weren't allowed to go to Rift Rivals, even though they are outright second, almost equal first here, and uh, will be able to be outright first for at least a day uh, if they win here. And especially in hindsight, right, because Sandbox missed out on being that big squad of teams that went forward yeah. and actually won the event. We're going to look at some stats here. Sandbox, Drake control, but I want to actually show you the difference in gold difference at 15. This is the season, so we're not just gonna zooming in on one week stat. Dumb on gaming, they don't dominate the lanes. Yes, Nogari can pop off, but Showmaker usually just farms it out. But if you look at the difference between the early game and then 30 minutes, that's a really big increase in gold. Negative 80 to positive 4,085. So we're talking a 4,165 turnaround. That's usually when a side laner like the Chase or the Camille or has the that Vladimir. one and a half, two items. The Radomir has two items and some CDR and then they can really get their side lanes in order and just blow up the map. I actually think it's a really cool stat to illustrate exactly how Dom One play, but we're going to check out Sandbox first. 
as on fleek has been a god this season i'm glad that we've highlighted him when we were discussing this match, it was really hard to work out who was going to be the winner, but I think Onfleek was uh, certainly your man of sandbox as far as getting them through and giving them those powerful early games. It's a really tricky game even to just do the lane by lane and try to find out who's better because you have better players in air quotes when you're thinking of mechanics yeah. versus very similar performing player and we're getting very kind of existential about what the better is given the sandbox come in seven and one looking really powerful to me the only kind of gaff is i think on fleek reliably is a better player on the rift than canyon as far as they've shown in the lck yes canyon has been a solo queue guard very prodigiously talented but if you exclude kind of super pop-up games like the canyon carthus game that got Korea the title, Onfleek on the whole has been better. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. And I think especially in the early game, Onfleek has been the guy that's been able to pilot things like Yolaf when other junglers can't do it. And being able to get, and his Xin Zhao is of course legendary. And separation because you see no Xin Zhao priority. Yeah, exactly. Canyon in the summer seasons, there are some different mix. Now, Xin Zhao, Karthus are the ones we think of. When that one gaming come in, you just really prefer not to give them Vladimir because even Showmaker yeah. has his move. That's, this is the scary thing about this team is they can flex almost everything. This is what Griffin don't necessarily have that Darmon do. It's the fact that every pick that comes in can be piloted by Nogari or Showmaker. So do we show the most hype matchup, which is Nogari versus Summit, or yes, do we show we do. probably the most important matchup, which is Summit versus, sorry, is uh, actually the jungle matchup yeah, on Fleek versus, versus Canyon. On Fleek, yeah. I think Canyon has to rise. We focus on the two best top laners in the LCK right now. Sadly, Keen has been a little bit off the pace recently. Summit has better stats overall when it comes to laning stats. I did my own research before, and he has a few laning stats that are stronger, but it's not that Nogari does the damage in the early laning phase. He'll counterpick himself and then run over you after the early laning phase is over. Get the rack attacks. Those raccoons in chat, you know all about Nuggery. He was a superstar on the international stage, and I'm sure Summit watched on. And you know what? He's the one player where you can confidently say, if he's sitting there saying, I could do it too, he's probably right. Well, he's been watching Keen do it for a very long time, Papa Smoothie. This guy was uh, certainly uh, used to it. That is, uh, make no mistake there. And we'll see whether the Rift Rivals hangover is going to affect Darmwon here as well, because it certainly in, uh, infected Kingzone yesterday in game number one. That was a roughie. I love the forward percentage. 47% of the time yep. of the entire laning phase and onwards, <laughs> he is in front of center. Nogari is the king of overextending. The first pick, Jace, is a big pick for both teams. We're going to be introducing the teams now on our blue side. It will be Sandbox Gaming entering next to the Rift Rivals trophy that I'm hoping we can keep for a great many years to come. Some are going to be leading the charge. Nothing to talk about when it comes to rosters for both of these teams. Haven't uh, seen Hoyt for a very long time, and if you caught a glimpse there, it will be Beryl starting once again for Dom. And Sandbox Gaming, they still, to me, are the best team that are impossible to rate. You never want to come out and say, yeah. this is going to be our team. You never plant your flag on Sandbox Gaming, and yet they keep on winning Atlas. Yep. If they win today, it's far from an upset. They could win 2-0, and it would be an earned victory. Sandbox Gaming can just pile on with the wins, and the fandom will follow them. Well, let's hope that it does, but this team, no stranger to picking up new fans after that final match that won them. Rift Rivals 2019 on the weekend. This is Dom One Gaming. And yes, Nuclear did be into it a little bit, but the rest of the team were unbelievable. And Barrel, man, Bot that lane. was a cow performance to hang your hat on. Exactly. Bot lane's a duo, and when Nuclear struggled, Barrel stepped up. His yeah. Alistair engage will go down. One of those famous moments in professional play, Dom One Gaming, really, really growing a fan base around the world here at Lowell Park. Voices for them will get louder and louder as the nights go on. We put down the nameplates. None of them are internationally renowned players, but maybe that's just a product of time. Maybe we will really look back on this with affection in two years of that. Remember when this was a quaint yeah. matchup. It's not going to be quaint anymore after Rift Rivals. It's growing. And Dom One Gaming will be looking to extend their win streak to 10. And people have been talking about Nogari, they've been talking about Showmaker, that Akali play certainly put him on the map, and then Beryl now making a star of himself. Dom One Gaming are a very flashy team, but I don't know whether they're necessarily as much of a cohesive team than what Sandbox have been showing us. I think that's why it's so difficult 
to rate that squad is because you can't necessarily say that, oh, Summit is the only guy that performs, or Unfleek just controls the jungle so well, blah, blah, blah. Kind of a fun way to spin it is that Sandbox Gaming categorically are better than the sum of its parts on Yeah. Paper. Because the only players you really rate are Summit and Unfleek. Dove's reputation is growing, and the bot lane always a bit unclear. You know, Ghost has a lot yeah, of baggage Yeah, it's like somehow the they have really good games, and but other times it's whoops. a shot caller, if you know yeah. what I mean. But Dunwood Gaming, interestingly, they can't be more than the sum of its parts because the parts are so, <laughs> so good. good yeah. And yet, what if one day they are, and how good is that, are things that we'll one day hopefully find out. But well, if match, you're a fan of different regions, that is a terrifying question. But here we are into the draft for game number one, Sandbox starting off on blue and will be banning both of the pretty high impact champions here on Dom One side in the Cardinals and the Black. Now, first picks have been interesting. We had Aatrox fall through pick and bans for three games in our first series, and then be first picked in our second. Jay's first pick seems very likely. Both top laners most played. Yeah. Is Jay's Nogari Slam locked it in at first pick, and up going to Showmaker, I believe. Yep. In. Rift Rivals, so Jace, super high priority, but there's all the other meta picks, right? So something's got to give when it comes to the first round here, so we'll wait to inspect that shortly, and it will be a Jace ban, because Summit, Nuggery, they're among our best. They certainly are, and Nuggery not wanting to give that one away, but they will give away the cat on a book, as Summit will lock in the Yumi for Joker. Not necessarily one of our notable uh, Yumi players, but with the Lux banned away, it's a pretty comfortable pickup. And that's the thing, is with Lux being banned red side, you feel like you got to win. Now, there are ways against this Nautilus, as they often seen make it accountable after the chase What about the bard? 12. What about Lumel's bard? Bob I mean, you know, you can try things. And we're all ways down for experimentation. Camille Sejuani's pretty comfy. Yeah, and they played at mid lane. They were the first to do so, running the Sejuani and mid lane Camille. But there's a lot of oh, stuff wow. to talk about on either side. Yeah, snap pickup on the uh, Olaf here for Onfleet. He doesn't want to pick up the Silas that we've seen so many times. I thought that might have been the option there. Has that been locked in already? Yep. Good God. Okay, Darmon. Well, we're here to play, Papa, because like it looks to me like we've just got Damwon picking their own champions this stage, unless Nuclear is going to be doing something interesting. It's possible. Remember that Gen G's counter to the Yumi was Gragas yeah. Yasuo. Uh, and there's a real chance we will see Gragas Yasuo this game. I would 100% ban him, even though you feel bad, because Sejuani's already locked in. Well, there's a guarantee that Damwon will be playing some sort of awesome dude on the bottom side of the map if it's not going to be the Yasuo, unless they can get a lot of magic damage out of an AD carry. I mean, you can play Kaisa that way, you can play Varus that way. We've seen the full AP Varus, things like really that. It would be a really heads-up ban to ban Crocs. They do it. Really smart ban from Sandbox. Again, Genji yeah. did this in week one. They first rounded Gragas Yasuo, and we were like, wait. Why would you lock in Gragas Yasuo against just a Yumi if it wasn't being considered for bot lane and it was the two for one special? So they're banning support Gragas. Being aware that if you can pay Alistair support, I'm sure your Gragas is just fine. Yeah, and uh, Beryl was brought into the roster, I believe, in the first time we were looking at his solo queue account and he was spamming the, the Galio. This guy is all about those uh, sort of melee enchanters on the bottom side of the map. And. Uh, Certainly can be piloting that Gragas here. Final band to come through from Sandbox Gaming. We're five seconds away. I've quite made up their mind. You know what's a pretty good budget Gragas <laughs> for the lane? <laughs> ah, it's Alistair, right? So yep. they ban away both the very obvious knock-up synergy supports if it is to be Yasuo bot lane. It's something that Nuclear has practiced a lot in solo queue. I believe he played it in spring, hasn't played it in the summer. Canyon gonna default onto but the lease Papa, in. What does this mean? Because well, there's a Sejuani there. Sejuani are we solo playing, lane. Are we playing yeah. Sejuani solo lane Top. or Sejuani support? You know, Sejuani support has been played in the LCK. It was Gorilla yep. in a super troll yep. game where I, I, I accosted him. Are you right actually afterwards. calling that a game? Is that like saying that, you know, Marta, well, he has played King's a professional own, game of support. Kingzone were well, one match short of being first placed in summer, and they lost a dumb game against Jin Air where they played zillion Sejuani bot lane. It was just trash. Yeah. I went and told Gorilla afterwards it was trash, and he looked at me sheepishly. <laughs> and you know what I do now to Gorilla? I post sad Gorilla you do, photos. You do post sad Gorilla photos. It is and when I'm picking them, you know what I'm thinking about? The Sejuani <laughs> zillion bot lane. <laughs> if you hadn't have done that, Misfits wouldn't be failing. Well, Sejuani solo lane seems likely, but you're right. Support could happen. Don't want to do a lot of fun They're stuff. They're just doing stuff, man. On the red and side. I really and why like not it. just pick power? Yeah. So they're going to pick the Renekton. That's how you battle shenanigans, by just getting a bigger gun, you know? 
You can do all of your shenanigans. We're just gonna, our weapons are gonna be better. That's just how it's going to work. All right, so this would be, like you mentioned, Sejuani's support in this one. It could be Lee Sin Lee support. Lee Sin support, I mean, like I just said, I mean, Marta has done that in a professional game. It was the Demacia Cup and we don't like to talk about it, but uh, it looks to me like it will be the support Sejuani. There was a time very long ago, maybe season two, where there was kind of one or two patches where people were playing around with support Lee Sin, kind of when uh, Sidestone support was Camille. That introduced. was a thing as well. That was an LCK one game from two season. But we it was it was one. sort of running rampant on uh, in solo queue at the time, so there was a reason for him to pick that one up at that stage. I mean, I think that uh, Camille was just overtuned. The way you look bit. at it, most the way you kind of look at it conventionally is that Canyon is a Lee Sin player, so it's probably going to be Lee Sin yeah. jungle. The Sejuani support seems to be Barrel's new thing. It is a champion that sets up the ultimate very easily, right? Because the Q is just a fixed cast, and you can easily yep. kind of hit someone with it. Very thick model on the Sejuani. So this is the budget, budget Gracchus Yasuo. <laughs> They're going Sejuani, baby. Well, sometimes when you've got a when you got a composition, you just throw a Sejuani in it. You guys have been playing Team Fight Tactics. You know exactly what I am talking about because she what? is a pretty good unit. You know what? If the Sejuani's bad, maybe you throw in Cho'Gath TFT style, right? I He's mean, you, you do the same thing with Yasuo, right? Yeah. <laughs> He's a five cost. He's legendary. You're gonna be hey, picking that one up. Don't you dare exile nuclear just because of one <laughs> bad game. Oh no, it's in a duo lane. He's not an. He's not getting the buff of oh. a Smithy. Missed positioning. This is a disaster. And off all the Dumb One Gaming players, he needed a bit of a bust, so he's yeah. gonna have to hold on here. <laughs> oh, come on. Dumb One Gaming coming back off the Rift Rivals, but Sandbox a really imposing target. Very intriguing drop from the side of Dumb One Gaming. And Sandbox have been doing their homework. They're renekton towards the top side of the map. They have a very strong draft. Will it work against the weirdness that Dumb One have provided? Dumb One feeling fantastic. They have momentum. Let's see what happens in game one. Arcade Yasuo back on the rift one more time. You a fan of that skin, Pub Smith? No. Oh, which one do you like? Uh, I like the Dade one, the cowboy one. Ah. Cowboy release skin, High yeah, Noon yeah. Yasuo. That's what I'm all about. I'm not a fan of the High Noon Yasuo because I think that it looks like the High Noon Jin too much. I know, but... Feels Dade, like they just had the same skin. That was Dade skin. It was Dade and skin, I was that's a, true. I was a Dade man in Many 2014. You were either Dade man skin. or a faker man. I was a Dade man in 2015. It was a really oh, sad time. Masters 3. <laughs> Let's stop talking about 2015 LPL and start talking about 2019 LCK. It's got colorful skins everywhere. Two young squads, but two squads that could be very central to Korea's hopes. There's a Absolutely, chance yeah. that both these teams go to Korea as the two out of three representatives at the end of the year. There's a lot of teams that are going to be in contention. Yep. Joker himself, you mentioned, not quite the Lehen school of Yumi play. Going to be going Guardian here. We saw this from Tucson. One out of two games. I believe it was Comet one game like Lahans and then into the Guardian. A bit more defensive choice. How do you get through lane in the bot lane, you might ask, on the Sejuani. He's going to stick with Aftershock. Has gone for second win for a bit of regen. And then very common to go precision second. Tenacity. Yeah, tenacity is mana regen. Yeah. So Beryl just going to be utilizing his uh, Relic Shield in order to try and at least stay alive in lane. We'll see whether he stacks this up if he's not taking too much uh, aggression. But as you can see, they will get shoved in. This lane will be a little bit rough until they can get these all-ins Oh, for sure. Obviously, oh, God. Yasuo sees rolling, better days. And uh, it's Yasuo and a melee support against a Yumi. So you can understand how that's going to go in the wow. early phase. We're going to look at Camille's runes here. Nagari has gone is that, Klepto into Renekton. Is which that is, BM? Uh, that seems like massive BM to me. So, yes. Oh on the one hand, God. yes. This is basically saying, I'm going to have my jungler in my pocket the whole time, otherwise I'm trolling. So, yeah, or like, I'm just that much better than you that it doesn't matter. But this is what you can do if you're really next up. And we know that Nogari is the opposite of, I just lock in the keystone every time. But he I mean, always he's, plays he's around. Winning. But he always plays around with rune choices, he right? Does, he does. He was the guy who innovated the 40% CDR Vlad build that looked so OP back at Kesper Cup when the new runes came out. First one to run the Doran's ring as well on the Vladimir. So he's always 
leading. So he gets in people's heads because everyone looks at his runes and says, is that just because he's a bit crazy or is that because that's the new OP thing? It's bot lane, we're trying to all Yeah, here's the all in. Permafrost is going to go down the Ignite. Ticks picks up the kill. Dom one. Three minutes in and they've already got first blood. We were talking about waiting for the all in. There it was. It had to come after level one. The level one they gave up. But the moment at level two that Joker delatched, it seems like they had a chance to go in. Nogari. Nogari's trading up. He's Why is... He so makes it look I'm, like a counter matchup, Papa. What's happening? So I'm going to get there, but unfortunately action happened in the bot yeah. lane rudely. The reason why he's doing this, if his jungler isn't revealed, you have to play respectful, because otherwise, why would he be up so far? And that's what Nogari does. He may, always plays with his runes. He gets in your head, and he's playing the lane like he has jungle cover the entire time. Of course, if there was an in-game leader like CSGO, they'd be in his head being like, by the way, he's got nothing. No cover. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. Well, not happening. He's going to go back home. We're going to check out how this one actually happened. It was a turret shot taken from no, Ghost, but, and unfortunately, but Joker, Joker delished. Yeah. Remember how the cooldown works. The moment you jump in, the cooldown starts. He instantly jumped out, so that's the all-in timing. Yeah, that's just a mistake. And also, he jumped out the wrong side as well. It was just bad news. That was really, really poor from Joker, just misunderstanding how to play Yumi. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I was going to bring this up as well, Papa, but I felt like I ate my words last time I spoke about this. It was when Joker picked up the Lux, and I was like, well, I mean, are the old man mechanics going to work for a new champion in his repertoire that he hasn't played so much? And he was great. He was fantastic. Well, that wasn't mechanics, right? That was decision-making, which is usually fantastic. That's yeah. true. That's true. d is not <laughs> pressing a button, right? It's not yeah. actually with any sort of aiming. Just a really poor decision there. But Nogari has been able to... Fake his way as he fake, he's faked it before he's made it, and that's what this ma that matchup is, right? Don't get run over, and then eventually try force ravenous Hydra. You can actually trade against Renekton, but he's faked it with so much aggression. His jungle hasn't been revealed, and Olaf was playing bot side as we saw with the attempt at a gank. That actually Nogari comes out gold parody. Yep. Also uh, probably has way more money as well because Klepto is there and he's just been battling this entire time. You saw the money just coming up. As a, don't try this at home. Just yeah. to be clear, do not yeah. go. This is this is not a good thing. <laughs> enter an actor. Don't do it. We're sending the wrong messages here. As Barrel going hyper aggressive, Upshot going to get some work done. As the permafrost does come in, but Ghost is going to be okay. Zoomies helping him out there. As Canyon benefiting from the extra range on that Q. As Summit finally able to get a trade working in his favor. Oh. You're so tilted if you have to I'm watch this I'm tilted. Bot. I'm tilted. Do you have, does the coach have him watch the bot? <laughs> During, between games, maybe not, right? Because yeah. press the attack Renekton is the uh, opposite of Klepto Camille in the early game. But no CS lead to show that. On Fleek also, because bot lane got solo killed 2v2, on Fleek has to kind of make this work. Remember when Olaf falls behind. Remember yesterday we had Olaf losing red buff, getting three buff, never getting going. Olaf is the epitome of this cast a grab word, the tempo jungler, where when his lanes are able to overextend, like Renekton usually against Camille, you just run into the red side jungle and you know that Renekton will be responding first. He's got the lane control. If bot lane surprisingly loses and, uh, and top lane is not getting an advantage in a counter matchup, suddenly Olaf's like, wait, where can I go? Yep. And that's usually where things fall apart for an Olaf. The other thing I wanted to talk about as well is uh, the draft was was done really intelligently on the Dom one side. Remember, they picked the Sejuani, and then instantly on Fleek is like, okay, I can Olaf into this. But we've seen so many Korean junglers picking the Lee Sin into the Olaf when given that opportunity. It might have been a very late flex of, uh, of the Lee Sin just to make sure that this matchup is okay for Canyon. Small point, on Fleek actually was camping to steal experience for level six. He got level six from the lane minions dying over the wall. Didn't end up being important because he wanted to contest the Infernal Drake that Canyon was on top of. A cool little mechanic, understanding experience ranges. Sandbox still going to have, in a resting state, lane control because two melee champions against oppressive ranged opponents. The range differential is like 11 Teemos, yeah. 12 Teemos. Too many Teemos. If you guys wonder why we use Teemo as a unit of measurements, because Teemo's model size is exactly 100 units. So when yep. you hear that... Caitlyn has 650 range, it's six and a half Teemo's range. Yep. And that's the, the Teemo base skin model. If, uh, that was Ryze's decision. Watching. Yep. I think assault from Barrel does mean that Aftershock is on cooldown as this wave is crashing into the turret. Going to be a little bit more difficult to defend for the next few seconds. Kali with some lane control in the mid lane is actually uh, pretty good here. 
for Sandbox Gaming is wanting to get her out of there and start skirmishing around things like this dragon would be important. I just realized, Atlas. Oh, yeah. You know how there's the Big Mac standard for understanding the, how much relative currencies are worth? Yeah. The Big Mac in, the Big Mac index? We've got a Teemo index. Yeah. All right. It's been the case. I like it. I, I like know, it. but I didn't, I didn't put it together. <laughs> you haven't put it in there yet. And it's yeah. a global thing, you know? And I'm glad that it's a global thing as well, and it's about measurement, because, you know, I have a problem with the Imperial measurement system. Really? What's your problem with the Imperial measurement it's system? It's not good. It's better than the Sorcerer measurement system. <laughs> I don't know. At least that's quaint, you know? There's nothing quaint about Nuggery being able to push out of lane yeah, I mean, with a CS advantage and put down deep vision. This in is actually Kleptokamil versus it's irresponsible. Renekton with press the attack. It is straight up irresponsible of him to be winning this matchup this hard, or at least Think staying of the even. Children in, it. in solo queue. Exactly. That are now thinking, oh, Camille, the counter matchup. If I take Kleptomancy into Renekton, it really beefs up my traits. Yeah. I can buy an extra potion when I'm in the death chamber. Oh my. Well, you know who's going to be in the death chamber? It is actually the Infernal Drake around the uh, Yasuo lane. So this game has been very surprising from a sandbox perspective. Right now, if I'm Comet, their coach, I'm ripping out my hair. Yes. And, uh, we'll my see best laid draft. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, loves it when a plan comes together, but not when a plan comes out of the draft coming together and then not working at all. Uh, when we actually hit the rift, but it is only 10 minutes in. They are down in Infernal Drake, but as far as money is concerned, it hasn't even crested that 1k mark yet, and we haven't had our first skirm. Shelly is going to be on the rift in 15 seconds, and that might be an opportunity for Sandbox to get some sort of skirmish happening with their solo lane. Akali's role in this game is very interesting, though, because Akali's obviously the enemy of the AD carry. As yeah. the AD carry, even in Ezreal's like, crap, oh. a lot of mobility to assassinate me. Where are we going? You know, in team fights, who yeah. you choose? Because you're kind of going to be caught in Yasuo AOE, and there's no one to dive because all of Dumb One Gaming are diving after you. So conventionally, you say, ah, oh, never mind, you'll play side lanes. Even then, the side lanes don't necessarily scale into a wonderful spot. You're more comfortable against LeBlanc in the side lane in the late game than most champions are, but you don't have as kind of wide win conditions around Akali like we usually see where it's, wow, the 1v1 can be really good, also team fighting. Speaking of team fighting. Yep. We're going to look for it here as Onflake has the Ragnarok popped as Showmaker dives on in. Hextech Ultimatum will secure the kill onto the Olaf is now Summit. He's being kited a little bit, but Showmaker is the one that's going to get taken down. Summit delivered that kill as both top laders are going to trade. Final chapter towards the bottom side as that's just too much damage. Dumb one, a way too strong and it's a late exhaust meaning that none of this damage is mitigated and a double kill goes over to Nuclear. Okay, apparently we'll just win everywhere, says Dumb One Gaming. Yeah. Yes, Showmaker dies, but they get leads or at least even trades in the top and bot side. Equal turret plates at 11 minutes between the Yasuo lane and the Ezreal lane. It seems like Dumb One Gaming came with a homebrew solution to everyone. I'm tasting the homebrew, I'm sipping it, and this is some delicious craft beer coming out of Dom One Game. It's really nice stuff. They, they've managed to at least go to the right school when it came to homebrew, and that can go disastrously wrong, Papa Smithy. And we were expecting it to. I mean, this is a support Sejuani. It's not necessarily supposed to work straight out of the game. Who knew that they were just one Yasuo short of genius? <laughs> Hila Sang approves on that one. Watching the kill here, it's the first instant kill. We actually missed this one, I believe, on the back side of Summit. Just takes the free counter kill on the top side, but this is the surprise. A 2v2 kill into a 2v2 double kill. Contesting vision. Ghost, well, he uh, went in the wound direction there. He's not taken out. In the wound direction. There's a uh, 2012 shout I was, out. I was going to say, we were talking about 2015 LPL, we had a problem with it, and then you go the wound direction. It's an LCK <laughs> reference. <laughs> hey, that's I true. Know. At least we're the right region. We're the right region. Yumi. I'm listening. I heard <laughs> nicer Yumi. and I heard Yumi. Yeah. yeah. I think they're making a cat sound and with the yeah. Yumi sound. <laughs> Matt, Dumb One Gaming are feeling it, you know? And you can understand why it would be a 10-match win streak in terms of series. They would win here. You have to remember the players on this team as well. You've got Nogari who is so infectious with his excitement. You can imagine the momentum. I mean, it works differently for a lot of teams based on which players that you have because some teams have robots on them. You know, you've got, you've got Teddy and Faker who aren't often then unflappable when it comes to that sort of thing. But Nogari is the complete opposite. Like, this guy, if he's on a high, He's taking Klepto Camille and still beating the Renekton. And one of the things I love about casting with you, Atlas, is that you are also on the unflappable side. We both throw out <laughs> kind of crazy, like, reference and stuff, and we're there to catch, you know? We're yeah. very much 
the about the duo ball. synergy there. We saw that Reddit post. I talked about it on broadcast yesterday. However, I was the reason why I bring it up is I'm going to flap you. I don't know if that's the expression. I'm going to try. Okay, okay. See whether I'm flappable? Are you give me a flap yeah, test? I'm a flap test. I think I can flap you with All a League right, of Legends later go. comment as we see if Sandbox can actually hold on to their red. I think Diamond Gaming would probably be smart. I'll hold my flap for the moment. I'll hold the comment for a moment. Late invade. Yep. Expected. I saw an and Ezreal won't be joined Dove here first. What's over the wall as Ghost is underneath the turret. Showmaker has found Dove at the beginning. Beryl actually going the opposite direction though as on fleek. He's got a Yumi in his back pocket. Dumb one are going to disengage. There should be a distortion there to get Showmaker over the wall. But back to flapping. Yeah, flap me, Papa Smoothie, flap me. So, here's the scenario. Dumb one gaming, win today. Let's say confidently, 2-0. Okay. 2-1, whatever, they win. They face King Zone on Saturday, the next match, and they win confidently. Are Dumb One Gaming favorites for LCK Summer? Yes. That's a very to, confident to me, answer. To me, Dumb One Gaming at the moment are the best performing LCK team. Still, I was ready to say it at the beginning to call of them Rift favorites Rivals. is pretty big, right? Because Griffin are still yeah, a great no, team. No, I know, I know. And uh, the thing is, Griffin have that problem of uh, they've almost got that title of Choker that uh, King Zone had for so so long. And I know, you know, you're you're very much of the play-by-play -play school of all right, let's go for it. But like that is pretty big to say favorites I know, for the entire I know. title based on kind of ten matches in a row of play. And uh, I'm I'm also it's not necessarily just the play-by-play -play thing. I'm a very gut feeling uh, type predictor. How do you feel uh, about the infernal train? Well, last chapter is going to come in. We're looking for some damage. Good knock-up comes forward. As that's a lot of follow-up there. Ghost does have a teleport following him, but it's a great ultimate coming through from Barrel. And he goes Nogger into the back line. The first kill will go to Darwin, and look at them grouped up. The last breath is going to come in, and I don't care about chapters. I'm all about breathing, as Darwin Gaming will take the second Infernal as well. They hope the final chapter will be a start, but their final breath with so many people going down. Atlas, the problem is, guess who was watching on in horror? Dove had no one to dive. He didn't even have his ultimate up. There was no way for him to contribute. But we already outlined that with a comp like this, there's no AD carry to get on top of. And those aren't just regular drakes, those are the fiery ones. Two infernals, Nuggery pushing up. We're getting into silly gold leads already. Yeah, this is stomp territory. And we weren't expecting this, because remember, Sandbox, they had so much more prep time over the, um, the Rift Rivals break. You know, this is a time for them to relax, get themselves in the right headspace, they'll really study their first match. It straight up hasn't happened. I felt like it might have from the draft, but from this, that's a big no from me. And it's so cool because it was in so many inventive ways and none of it was the mistakes of Sandbox, apart from wouldn't they have liked to know this? There was a lot of information things where Dom One got ahead and made smart moves like we talked about with the Relentless Aggression top side. Speaking of Aggression top side, they're looking for the all the objectives in the early game. It's been a perfect objective game so far for Dom One. Yep, they will be able to take Shelly down and you're exactly right, they're one kill away. Uh, Showmaker's death, taking them away from a potential perfect game. You can imagine they're not really considering that one. Looking down at the items, we almost have the Steric Gauge done for Nuclear. He will be a raid boss as this game goes on. 20 CS ahead, 2-0 and 4, with a 200 gold bounty against an Ezreal as a Yasuo duo lane. It is disgust. Unbelievable. <laughs> Atlas, I don't... It's very hard to underrate just how well Dumb One Gaming are playing in this game against quality opposition. 7-1 and one. Sandbox Gaming. Only lost to King Zone beat Griffin uh, in this season. And yeah. he walks up. Contesting here, the Rift Herald. Charge is going to be late. Yeah, Predator is going to come forward, but Arc Consult's pretty good there as Beryl's able to get out of the way of the Charging Viking. Any support that can nebulously build tank items and can face check and put down wards with a gap closer or the ability to go over a wall. Well, Five speaking of this going point, over a wall, we're looking for the Winter's Wrath. Not actually finding it as Nuclear hunts forward with his Tornado. Showmaker diving on in. Edge. He's burning down. Zoomy's going to be there to make sure they keep him alive. But there's the ultimate Glacial Prison under the turret. Nuclear finishes off the kill very comfortably. And the rest of the team's there for the follow-up. This is a team highly coordinated and poised to kill someone. What happened? They are bullying Sandbox Gaming. This is some sort of atrocity going on on the ref. They are so relentlessly aggressive and willing to flex. And I see you dumbfounded. You look entirely I am flapped incredulous. I am mega flapped and I'm not supposed to be flappable. You mentioned this before. 
Because uh, oh, you just God. watch these plays and the times they're choosing, they know how strong they are. And what does an LPL team do when they're ahead that we never see in the LCK? They continue to challenge you, skill check you, and they say, look, you're a good player, but I'm just as good. I think I'm better as I need to, and I've got more items, so I'm willing to go. They go under the turret, and Sandbox Gaming can't deal with the pace of the dumb one gaming onslaught. Yeah. And it's just the precision and the way that they're navigating with this unorthodox composition. You were talking about the LPL. It's making me feel like we're watching G2, where they pick something strange and then they show us exactly why they picked it during the game. And it looks like genius. That's what Don Juan are doing right now. Well, it's really exciting. It's Summit. He's going to pop that Dominus. The flash is used from Nogari, who went a little bit too far forward battling for this red buff. Showmaker's going to dive on in, though. Not able to actually steal it away, but still going aggressive. And the outer turret in the mid lane is being pressured. Goes there, will defend. Still, if you're going to play the all-out assault, there are going to be moments where one person is caught by multiple. And Buffs Gaming coming from far behind, both in terms of map control, but from their bases and with how advanced down one game you are at 19 minutes kind of feels like this game has gone to hell in a handbag quickly yeah there will be chance to shut down this time only a flash from Nogari no kill comes in there Nogari himself close to the uh, the two item mark where we say that the lane really does start to move apparently no one told Nogari when it comes I know to the well, early I, game. I mean like what does that actually mean when it when it's in terms of know. Nogari because uh, the lane was like level one he was still in a positive matchup as now he's looking for a 1v2 hookshot comes in summit doesn't find the column eek. great teams Sorry, take Rufus on paper matchups advantages and disadvantages they laugh at them and they make them all their own and that's what dumb gaming is doing here they've done a lot of unconventional stuff that could work all of it is working at the same time and that's why it's a casual 7,000 gold lead and whoever the Yumi is bound to is still getting chunked like no tomorrow. And look at the bottom lane. This was after we had Beryl's hard carry performance, but in the 2v2 at Rift Rivals in their final game against JD Gaming, Lumao and Imp really had their number. Now Nuclear comes in like he's been completely charged up from what felt like a loss for him, honestly, in that game. It was really, really rough. Dying level one and then getting 2v2 killed in that lane also. Now comes in and they're just casually Yasuo Sejuani sandbox to death. A team that was challenging for first place here in the LCK. It's definitely a rude awakening. I don't think anyone could have seen game one going this way right now. Seems like Damwon playing with their food. However, we should indicate they have lost games in this scenario recently against yeah. Kings and Dragon X in game number two. The enemy, Vladimir, was 0-4. They had a massive gold lead on their top lane, Aurelia, and yet things fell apart. Now, I don't believe that will happen here because they have a very easy to execute team fight comp that wasn't supposed to have their item spikes at this point in the game. So they're very accelerated with a pretty easy to execute comp. The only thing they can't do is Siege, and their 1 3 1 with Ignite LeBlanc is an amazing. But they can set up the Baron, decrease the damage with things like the Wind War, and then turn is S. Plus. So because of that, should be confidence here. However, we should, you know, call out the elephant in the room. Dumb One Gaming don't always easily secure leads and close games from there. Yeah. The thing about it is their one through one with Yasuo Camille is actually pretty good, to be honest. So uh, they can play around that if they want to. I have a feeling that Dumb One are going to keep up the aggression, though. You can see already with a lot of vision around this Baron area, they're still clearing things out. It's 21 minutes, so Baron is a pretty dangerous thing to go for, and without a whole lot of consistent damage, when you're minus your Yasuo and Camille, it is a little bit difficult. But uh, we'll see whether they can actually command some control around there, because right now, with 7,000 gold in the lead, they have a lot of power. And you wonder if Sejuani's support, with the lowering priority on Sejuani jungle, might actually start to become a thing in Korea. Is this a one-off? Is this a new meta trend? But with the flexibility of adding uh, the Sejuani support as an option, yeah. that's the huge thing, because you do need to bear it in mind. As here's the engage, final chapter coming in. Not getting a whole lot of value, but they do manage to take him down. Nuclear in with two kills instantly, though, as the Ragnarok is not enough. It's waited out, and Beryl gets the ultimate down. A double kill now for the uh -oh. Asuo, as they're able to dive so incredibly aggressively. Tornado doesn't hit the mark, as Ghost is getting some damage in, but Darwan able to win the fight that Sandbox started. And Dove really wanted to pick there. He wanted to have that moment of fight back in the 1v1. Saw that Showmaker had wasted his W. Thought there was a solo kill. Monty Darwan rotate first. They rotate on to Baron, and Sandbox will spot it. Not sure what they can do.
Well, Windwall is going to be there to deny the True Shot Barrage. That would have done a lot of damage, actually. He'd be in five seconds one. on Dove. Yeah, four seconds to go, but the Baron isn't going to last that long. No. The Teleport is coming in. It's from Summit. He has the Yumi, but the Baron is gone. And look at this. They all have the ability to get over the wall, but they don't even want to. Summit taken down to below half health. He's destroyed. Before he can do anything, and Canyon just goes golden. Nuclear is there, and the Sejuani's going to go down as Dove. He's doing his best showmaker impression, but Nogri is now here on the rift. Dove is going to turn up. Nuclear looking for a good flash to get out of the way of the Steel Tempest, but Showmaker has respawned, and now it's his turn. The mid laners are doing battle, but the last laugh is there from Damwon. Triple kill, and Showmaker cleans up. And Damwon Gaming will always take those skill tests. They'll always keep fighting, even though most teams are just trying to escape with the maximum Baron buffs. Let's talk about the entire play. There's a lot to evaluate. Dove takes the second part of the E, knowing that LeBlanc is out of mobility, and Olaf is there. Tried to get a counter kill, down one gaming in position first. This is what led to the Baron. The timing on the Glacial Prison, we've seen so many says yeah. why ults fly wide. Important that that one hit. The Baron goes down, and remember, you can get out of the pit. Not flashes on everyone, but a lot of people could have escaped here and you would have had maximum buffs. Instead, they say, screw it, let's fight. And that is the dumb one gaming way to go. They take the skill check, and usually taking out Baron buffs here with only a couple left, you say, uh oh, this isn't ideal. Do notice what Baron buffs remain. Nogari keeps his Baron, and Showmaker has a Baron as well. He got it because he respawned in time while the buff died. So their side laners do keep the Baron, and they can still play multiple lanes. Yeah, there can be that potential one through one threat, as you can see already. Showmaker moving down towards that bottom side. Spirit Surgeon and the Black Cleaver are done here for Summit. So he does have his core CDR items, but I just feel like it's way too little too late because there's a 408 Camille with a 600 gold bounty staring him down with three items already completed. This game has been a masterclass in how to play this awesome dude composition that just starts the fights that it wants. Look, all I can tell you is that the top two top laner versus the top two top laner battle involved a Camille with Klepto winning lane against Renekton and having priority. That that's, that's all the you rest need to know. Top laners look pretty mediocre, to be honest. I mean, it's pretty easy to look mediocre next to Nogri and Summer, and this yeah. is a league with Keen in it. So, what can you say? Diamond Gaming going to push down the bot lane here. You know, they could take this slow, but they can't take it that slow. They can't siege, right? So, the all-in threat is quite high. Yep, and uh, Nogri, you can see on the top side of the map, is getting work done. True Shot Barrage is going to be denied by the Wind Wall, but now that is going to be on cooldown. Safeguard to make sure that Canyon is relatively safe. Flash forward, Showmaker with the deletion! See you later, Ghost, and now see you later, bottom inhibitor turret. The top inhibitor turret's also going down as Nogri is a one-man wrecking crew. And that is base broken in two places. Darwan able to find the opportunity as Canyon may have found it as well. The kickback nuclear has the ultimate, but Dove gets out of there. The final chapter is in, but Sandbox are running for the hills. Just the edge of the tornado. And Darwan are now just parading around the fountain, waiting to get into game number two after they dismantle this sandbox easily. 23 kills in 26 minutes. They want one more. Yep, all diving on forward. The kill goes over to the Camille, and then he gets executed by the Fountain Laser Nuclear. He wants another kill, but the Nexus is going to go down first. And Dom won in a surprise victory, not necessarily because of the result, but because of how it was orchestrated. Come out with a win after game one. Damwon Gaming come back from Rip Rivals and looking to extend their win streak to 10 matches. Matches in game number one, they dumpster Sandbox Gaming. Good God. Seven and one in the first round. Robin looking to go eight and one and be a joint first place team. This was a very impressive game one victory. And the only question we have is, can we skip over the break and see what random assortment of champions they picked for game number two? Because they don't pay respect to standard matchups on paper. They don't pay respect to a lot of conventional logic. And that was a flexing from Damwon. Absolute masterclass. Really cool stuff here from these guys. I love that Beryl comes back from his incredible MVP performance on the Alistair and then picks the Sejuani and then they capitalize on a lane mistake that comes in and then just go undying throughout almost the entire game. Just absolutely incredible uh, performance here from Darmwon carrying from the bottom side of the map this time in a lot of ways, although Nogari was still just a beast in the laning phase. I'm guessing that's some family on the Darmwon yeah. side. We'll see if we get the confirmation from Jisun on that one. But uh, there's a lot to like about Dumb One oh, Gaming. Yeah. We knew that already. 
on the on the weekend, but uh, yeah. And there's a lot of new signs out there and some young people who needed a team to follow. Some Korean fans, lapsed fans, who come back saying, I thought, you know, I heard Korea wasn't that good anymore. I'm coming back. Who should I follow? May I introduce Dumb One Gaming? 24 kills in 26 minutes. More than a combined kill a minute between the two teams. This was action-packed, but it was really nice League of Legends on the Dumb One side. That's what I really love about it, is it's not only incredibly flashy play coming in here, the kills that Showmaker were able to rack up were just disgusting in a lot of cases. And 21.4k uh, damage out of the Camille, who was just thrashing that uh, Renekton at every opportunity. 16,000 gold was the lead at the end. We're willing to go on on record, we're thoroughly flapped here on the LCK yeah. Global English Caster Desk. You caster cursed our unflappability, Papa Smith. That's what you did. No, it was done. One. <laughs> they just ripped up the conventional. And uh, you know what? I can always live in some unconventional. I can try to yeah. deconstruct the next level, next levels, because Dumb One Gaming, the style was undeniable. That was absolutely amazing. And this is why I love best of threes as well, because we potentially just get it one more time. I hope we so. Maybe hope even so. two more times. That's what Sandbox. I'm hoping for, the second part. Three yeah, games, baby. Let's see what happens, guys. We will be going to a short break. When we get back, can Sandbox get uh, that experience out of their minds and try and take down Darwin in game number two? Because we know that they have the capability to do so. We know that this team has a whole lot of potential. Darmon Gaming game number one made it look way too easy. Darmon Gaming potential is becoming reality, Atlas, and that is a scary world for everyone living. Yep, that's true. But Sandbox, they are a bunch of champions, and we'll see whether they can do it as we get to game number two right after the break. Yeah, I'm 